Uh, welcome to a Christopher Moonlight practical effects tutorial. <laughs> Today we're doing chest bursters. <sighs> hey everybody, welcome to my special Aliens chest burster Halloween tutorial. So we are going to be building this puppet practical effect for our Halloween costume. Now Halloween's right around the corner, so this should only take you about a day to build using materials that are generally household. This is what I've got laying around the house. So I'm gonna tell you what I used and it may not be what you need. You may be able to substitute these materials for something else and build your own chest burster, but here's how I did it. Some standard foam core you can get at Walmart, some tubing, also springs, fishing line, hot glue and hot glue gun, scissors, a blade, dowel that you'll cut into palm size, and tin foil, some wire, and bend and flex Sculpey. Bend and flex because the regular Sculpey breaks a lot easier once you bake it. Latex and baby powder, some paint, caulking, this is silicone caulking, and some red foam. So first of all, I'm gonna start by cutting out a circular shape about the size of a, I don't know, that's a, I think that's a vitamin pill lid. So get a nice circle. I'm gonna cut six of those. So two, three, four, five, six. Ta-da. So I'm gonna take two of them and we're gonna start poking some holes in them. I'm gonna poke four holes kind of opposite of each other. So just uniformly poke those in. Let's speed this up because, yeah, we don't want to sit and watch me do this in slow motion. So I don't need them to be small. I want them to be about the screwdriver size. There you go. So now we're going to get some tube. You can see about the length that I'm cutting here. And we're going to put those two pieces through the holes. You see they fit nice and then connect them together. Now, if you don't have tubing like this, I recommend going to soap pump bottles, those little hand soap pump bottles. You can get those uh, out of there. There are tubes and springs in those. That's where I get the springs as well. So you see I'm hot gluing it on all the sides so that they're together. I'm not worrying about the length so much because now I'm gonna take scissors and I'm gonna cut the excess. There you go. So you got a nice little piece and you see I've got a second one. So four out of the six little discs that we cut turn into two of these what I will call vertebrae. These are vertebrae to what are a tentacle mechanism. Now this is the same thing except with dowel instead of tubing. And you noticed, like I said before, palm size dowel pieces. I took a piece of dowel and I cut them kind of the, uh, the width of my palm was the measurement that I used, but results may vary. Now we still need the tube in there, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing in between the dowel pieces. There we go, and then from there I've got lengths of tubing which are a little bit longer than before. Um, this is important, and because the tubing is in a roll, it kind of gives it a little curvature, like a piece of mac and cheese or something. And I'm gonna let that curvature kind of stick outwards from the tube. There is going to be a reason for that, but it's not mandatory, it's just helpful. So again, we're gonna cut the excess from the top, but along the insides, I'm gonna leave it long. I'm just gonna kind of cut a little angle here so the, the wire or the uh, fishing line that we're gonna run through it has a little bit of room to move around. So from there, we're gonna add the springs. Now I chose these short springs. So you go digging around in different pump bottles or spray bottles, you'll find all sorts of springs. I went with shorter springs that were a little stiffer. Uh, the reason being is that there's going to be uh, some gravity pulling this mechanism down in a direction. So shorter, thicker springs give your 
vertebrae or your tentacle mechanism a little more resilience once it's angled outward from your chest. I think you can see where we're going from here. And as always, be careful not to burn yourself with the glue. You can see I'm kind of like parsing out the glue a little bit to give a little more hold to the rest of the mechanism. And here we have it. It's our bending mechanism. You can see it's pretty sturdy. Hot glue is your friend. All right, so now we're going to go with the, the not the blend and flex, the bend and flex Sculpey. Now this Sculpey, again, is chosen for its flexibility. It's not actually the best for bending and fle flexing mechanisms. I'm going to add some white to it as well, and I think I also added a little bit of extra yellow and red. So now I'm going to make the face of the chest burster or the head and it's just a ball of tin foil and a little bit of wire and I kind of match it up to the tentacle mechanism to see if it matches and I'm using that wire to create a lower jaw now I'm not much of a sculptor but the face hugger or not the face hugger the chest bursters shape is pretty basic so I'm just using that wire and the tin foil to get that basic head and you'll notice I'm sticking a slightly longer spring in the back now that spring is, I'm molding the Sculpey around it so it will be embedded in there once I've baked it. So once it's in, you can't get it out. You can see here I'm kind of sculpting the bottom lip. I always recommend pulling up pictures of a face hugger, I keep saying face hugger, chest burster online so you can get a, a bit of a reference of how its jaw looks. But again, it's not that complicated and I'm not much of a sculptor. And I don't expect you to be either. So now we're sculpting, uh, or not sculpting, we're bending wire to make little loops. And you'll see I'm embedding these loops into the back of the head and kind of enclosing them in Sculpey. So once again, once we bake it, they will be in there permanently. And I'm doing that on both sides of the spring. So you have four loops sticking out, four loops for four tubes on each vertebrae so we can have four strings being strung all the way up through the mechanism and being tied to the head. So there you go. We can see how it fits onto the mechanism. And now we're going to make arms for our chest burster. Now this is more of an alien chest burster than an alien's one. It's kind of just got the folded in arms. And again, I'm not much of a sculptor. I'm sure I could have made a better job of them if I spent more time on it, but this is for the tutorial. And really, all we have to do is hold them up to where the body is, make sure they're the right length. And then we'll put some bend and flex Sculpey around here as well, like that. And really, we're just kind of doing little nubs of arms, kind of remind me of the Powerpuff Girls arms. So let's throw that in the oven and see how it turns out. I have no teeth yet. <laughs> so yes, we didn't sculpt teeth for this, and uh, that comes later. We've got a nice little technique for teeth, but for now, we're going to attach this head onto the mechanism. Now you'll notice the spring, if we put it right in the middle, leaves the head a little low. So. We're gonna go ahead and poke a hole in the mechanism a little high. Again, with the screwdriver. And then we're gonna go ahead and push that screw spring thing in there, but just through the first one, all right? It'll be pretty secure in there, but of course we wanna glue it down. We're not looking for too much flexibility on the head. We just wanna get enough that when the strings pull, it has a little bit more of a a flexible, believable movement, but most of the flexibility is gonna be left to the mechanism itself. So glue that down again, careful not to burn yourself. And here's how we do the teeth. This is what the silicone caulking is for. Silicone caulking, if you just kind of dab it down and gently pull it away, leaves a little dab. And if you wait half an hour to an hour to let that dab dry, then boom, you've got some teeth. This is a technique that I um, borrowed from Alec Gillis, who said he borrowed it from, was it Tom Savini? I can't remember, but he used it in Harbinger Down, so we're using it here for teeth. I've also used it for spines on trees and uh, you know, little prongs or whatever you call it, whatever is sharp. 
So now that we've got that all sorted out, I'm gonna trim down the foam core a little bit. You may or may not have to do this, but I decided that the head was a little smaller than the mechanism. So now it comes down to adding our fishing line. Now this fishing line is uh, nice and strong. The stronger the weight for it, the better. I probably could have chosen a stronger one. The Stan Winston School of Character Arts recommends something called Firewire, but I've never actually been able to find it. So I'm just using standard fishing line. Now you'll notice I'm threading it through the first two vertebrae towards the head. This is on the uh, what would be the left side if you were looking down at the top. I should have done a top view of this. But for the third vertebrae, the, or the final one, I'm moving it over one from to the right from where the original hole was being strung. Now the reason is that's going to add a little bit of a twisting motion to our chest burster. That string will pull and twist the body and the springs will give. So we're going to go ahead and tie that loop in. And tie it a bunch of times because once we're done with this, you're not going to be able to get to that knot. So make sure it's nice and secure because if it breaks, that's it. You're going to have to pull it apart to fix it if you have to. And you'll see what I mean later on. So we've tied the first one. There you go. You can kind of see how that twist works. Now we're going to do the second one. We're going to do the same thing, but one down. So this is more towards the bottom. And then we're going to bring it up so we can tie it around the top of the head. Now, stringing it different ways and tying it different ways will give you different results. So experiment with it. See which way works best for you. You may want it not to twist at all, or you may be more satisfied with just an up and down or side to side motion. Stringing it different ways will give you different results. So here I'm stringing it from the bottom now, and I'm doing the same thing on the bottom as I did from the top. I probably would have experimented with this more if I would have had more time, but I really wanted to get this tutorial out here for you guys. But you can see how nice the movement is right from the start. We're really starting to see a chest burster here. So now our chest burster needs some actual skin. So I'm going to pour out the very last of my latex in that bottle and spread it out on the table and then dry it with a hair dryer. And then once it's dry, we're going to baby powder it. We'll baby powder the top. This will keep the latex from sticking to itself as we peel it. And I'm going to gently peel it a little bit at a time and make sure that I'm rubbing baby powder on it the entire time so that the latex doesn't have any chance of sticking to itself and uh, ruining the skin that we're creating here. So now we have a nice latex sheet, just like that. Kind of looks like a pancake. So we're going to leave that be for a while and we're going to go and create a base for our face hugger. And you can see I'm attaching two at a little bit of an angle. And then here I'm using a glue. Now this glue isn't to stick it down permanently. Oh, I got the edit wrong a little bit. Okay, so we attach the base. So now from here, I'm putting the strings through. So this will allow the strings to kind of go outward where I can then run them up my sleeve and pull them from little rings that I'll attach to them for my shirt. Okay, so now we're attaching this. And like I said, we use some glue. I'm gonna kind of cut it to be the shape that will fit nicely around the head. All right, so we were gluing it down. My edit was a little wrong, but I'm not gonna fix it now. You get the point, guys. All right, so I'm gluing it down with this glue. Now, this isn't a strong glue. I'm just gluing it down enough that it will stay for the next thing that I'm gonna do, which will really attach it to the head firmly in a way that you won't have to worry about it breaking apart when it moves. And that's to pour more latex on top of it. The latex bonds to itself. So put latex around the head. Going to dry it so it stays. 
and turn it around and also put more latex along that seam and on the bottom so that it all stays. And then once again, add baby powder to keep it from sticking to itself. There we go. Now to keep it from looking like that meteorite creature in Empire Strikes Back, I'm gonna add the arms. And those arms really can be attached using any glue of choice. So my glue of choice was JB Quick for those, but try different ones. Rubber cement, hot glue may work for you. I was out of glue sticks by now, so. Now it's time to paint. I found this really nice kind of mustard yellow tone paint that I like, and I added some white to give it that kind of fleshy color that the newborn chest bursters start with. And then from there, I mixed a little bit of purple with a red. My red looked a little bit orange, so I wanted to darken it up a bit for the inside of the mouth. And then I added some red to the back, and here I'm dry brushing. That's when there's barely any paint left on the brush, and you're just kind of able to scrape a little bit out. So that helped for it to look like it was... Um, kind of covered in blood, but we're still getting the original tone through. Then you realize that the cats have chewed the string off. Ugh. So I barely had any string left because the cats, all that string that I, length that I had left, um, you know, way out, like over arm's length, was chewed off. So what I ended up doing here is attaching some little clips to the string that I could then tie more string to on the other side. So at least now we've got something attached there. This kind of limits the mobility. Unfortunately, I was going to run all four strings down my arm to be able to control it a bit at a time. And then here we have our, <laughs> our red foam core, which the chest burster can burst through. You can choose something else for your gore. Uh, get creative with this. Don't stick to exactly what I'm doing. But now what I've done is I've created a length of cardboard that wraps around my body. On an each end, I'm going to put some packing tape. Now the packing tape is so I can poke holes in the cardboard and run a string through it, kind of a nylon cord string, and pull it tight, kind of like you would a harness, without ripping the cardboard. The packing tape helps prevent that from happening because you do want to pull it kind of tight so it stays up there on your chest. So you can see I'm doing that. And here's the kind of nylon cord that I'm pulling through. So you can see how it ties together as a loop. Now this is low budget stuff, obviously. You can come up with a nicer harness than this, I'm sure, if you're a creative type. But I'm using cheap materials here, so we are sticking with that. Anyway, here's our harness. We see that it works. So let's get to attaching our face hugger. Chest burster, I keep saying face hugger. So I'm gonna use some Elmer's wood glue for this. This is strong stuff. Actually, this isn't Elmer's, this is some other brand, Gorilla or something like that. But any wood glue will do, attaching it to cardboard. I'm also using duct tape to hold it in place. Now I'm taping underneath the fishing line, not on top of it because that'll ruin your ability to pull it. But duct tape is a nice way to hold it down as well. There you go. I think I'll put a little bit of extra Gorilla Glue along the edges to make sure that the foam core doesn't rip out at any point. Shore it up. And I would give this 24 hours to dry, but that doesn't mean that in the meantime you can't continue to work on it. So this is pretty much it. You can put a little bit of red foam on top and you have your face hugger or your chest burster coming out of your chest. And that's it. So again, we've got our chest burster here. I just have a, uh, a wire going down my sleeve attaching to the um, to this little ring here that I just twisted out of some wire and uh, hot glued so that it wouldn't have any poking out spots with the string that I still have to trim. Uh, and I just attached these to the little links that I use to reconnect the string when the cats 
chewed the string. I'm still a little sore about that. Uh, anyway, happy Halloween, or if you're going to a convention, maybe you can build this. If you do build one of these, I would love to see it, by the way. Make your own video, make your own build, post it on Instagram, YouTube. So this is just the beginning. I'm going to be having more practical effects tutorials coming up, so be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to my channel. I'm also going to be creating practical effects elements that you can use in your own films, motion graphics, or advertisements, whatever it may be. I've got everything from horror to Christmas, holidays, uh, all sorts of great stuff coming up, royalty free with a license agreement. So be sure to uh, follow me on all of my social media links in the descriptions for more information. And me and this guy are gonna go out with the kids trick-or-treating.